Our bell chapter 65 talks about, uh, O oh God of our salvation, to the choir master, a psalm of David, a song. Praises, praises is due to you, O oh God, in Zion, which is Jerusalem. And to you shall vows be performed, or marriage vows, promises, um, to one another in marriage. Uh, vows can also mean, well, it's just, that's what it means, it's just, it's just promise, promising to God. Um, especially in marriage that that you plan on being on that uh, person, um, you know, man or woman, uh, you know, for all like, for forever. You know? um, that's what marriage is is between one man and one woman. Um, and when you get married to that person, you're you're you know, you're promising God that you plan on being with that person for the rest of your life. So. So basically, make sure before you get married, make sure that's the right person for you before you get married and make a mistake. So, you know, just play it smart. Um, it says, uh, O oh, you who hear prayer, to you shall all flesh come. When iniquities or sins prevail against me, you atone for our transgressions. Of course, David, you know, of course, when he sinned, um, he cried out for God for forgiveness. And for for repentance, and God forgave him, and God, you know, led him to repent to, through the Holy Spirit. Um, and of course, um, through Christ, we are saved. And um, through Christ, sin was washed away through His blood. Um, it says, "Blessed is the one who." It says, "Blessed is the one you choose and bring near." See, there out there is another um, verse. Mainly on predestination and election, I mean, God chooses us, we don't choose Him. Um, but, of course, in the majority of churches today, you won't hear that. It's always, you know, you have free will. It's always you, it's always you choose God. You will know right here, it says, it says right here in verse um, verse 4, Blessed is the one you choose, talking about God and bring here. And God chooses us, we don't, we don't choose Him. We don't choose Him. So, predestination and election is the true daughter, not free will. I know that shocks a lot of people out there, but... God chooses us, we don't choose them. I just read it to you right here. So, God chooses us, he's going to be saved. We don't, we don't save ourselves, God God saves us. He saves us, he is predestined to save. Um, it says, Blessed is the one you choose and bring near to dwell in your courts. Um, that's how I make course salvation. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house, the holiness of your temple. By awesome deeds, your answer. You answer us with righteousness, O God of our salvation, the hope of all the ends of the earth, and of the Father of seas, the one who by his strength established the mountains, being girded with might. Um, of course, God curded everything. You know, he, um, he made the mountains you know, to his, highest, to his, to his highest, highest point. Who stills the roaring of the seas. God, of course, stills the seas. The roaring of their waves, God calms the waves. The tumult of the people, God calms people down. And of course, and he caught, he, uh, basically God's in control of everything and whatever happens on earth, he has ordained it to happen for a reason. For his glory, most of all. And, like, and if you're saved, for your benefit. Uh, so that those who dwell at the ends of the earth are in awe at your signs. You make the going out of the morning in the evening to shout for joy. You visit the earth and water it, of course through rain. You greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. You provide their grain, for, you, for so you have prepared it. You water its furrows abundantly, selling its, selling, yeah, <laughs> settling its ridges, softening it with showers and blessing its growth. You crown the year with your bounty. Your wagon tracks overflow with abundance. Um, Read that verse 11. Again, it says, You crown the year with your bounty. Your wagon tracks overflow with abundance. The pastures of the wilderness overflow. The hills gird themselves with joy. The meadows clothe themselves with flocks. The valleys deck themselves with grain. They shout and sing together for joy. Um, I mean, 65 is basically saying, oh, David's just saying, oh God, you are, you are salvation. Um, you have, you're in control of everything. Whatever happens, you have ordained it to happen for a reason, for your glory, if you're safe, for your benefit. And um, of course, God's control. He's, he's, in, he's in control of salvation. So 
God chooses us, we're going to choose Him. And if, if you if you believe God is in control, you also believe that He's in control of salvation. So people don't think people don't think about that. When people when people say God's in control, I don't think I don't really I really don't think they believe what they're saying, um, or or they don't know what they're saying. Because when when you say God is, is in control, you mean He's in control of absolutely everything. But the worst thing that could ever happen on Earth, God God allowed allow it to happen. Um, I mean, God ordains everything. Everything that happens, He has ordained it for a reason, for His glory, and if you're saved, for your benefit. Um, so when you say God is in control, you're saying He's in control. You're saying that He that He is in control of the bad things that happen, the good things that happen. Um, you're saying that He's in control of salvation. You're saying that He's in control of absolutely everything, which is true. He's in He's He is in control of everything that happens. Um, everything that happens, He ordained it to happen for His glory and for save for your benefit. So, 65 says, "Oh God, our salvation." I mean, you know, only salvation, only salvation comes from God, not not from man. We don't save ourselves; God saves us through through Christ, through the Holy Spirit. I said 65, and I'll be back with 66 here shortly.